Okay. You want to have spell their name for you right away? Um, mm -hmm. So that they, they get the spelling right? Oh, yeah. S K E N A D O R E. Just one in there. And the first name? Gordon. And spell that too. G Some people spell them different. Oh, is it? Yeah. G O R D O N. Do you have a middle name? Yeah, Louis L L O U I S. Once we start filming, we're going to have you do it again, but they're just writing it down right away. Oh, thank you. was rolling on that studio. Go ahead, so you can go ahead and just dive into the questions if you like. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Gordy. Glad to have you and welcome you to our, our interview session. Um, I'd like to have you tell us your full name and then spell it and then tell us where you were born and the year you were born. Okay. My name is... Um, Gordon and Louis Skenador, spelled G-O-R-D-O-N-L-O-U-I-S-S-K-E-N-A-D-U-R-E. -E. It's born in um, Green Bay in November 13, 1938. And I'd like you to tell us about your parents, and uh, we'll start with your mother's side. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your mom and your grandma and your great grandma on that side. Mm -hmm. My um, dad's name was Arthur Scanador. Mother's maiden name was uh, Jordan Cynthia. And uh, her her parents uh, was uh, I got it written down here. I forget their name sometimes. Uh, Ephraim. Jordan and um, Elsie, great grandmother. That's your mom's parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember their parent or your parents on your mom's side? No, I don't. Yeah. I never was. Okay. How about on your dad's side? No, I don't. Um, no. So you had one set of grandparents then on your mom's side that you knew fairly good. I didn't know them uh, fairly good, but I you knew who knew, they were. You know, yeah. Did they live close by you at all? Mm, no, uh, I think my uh, great grandfather was deceased. And then I just knew my grand great grandmother um, just a little bit what I can remember. You know, I can, okay. she used to stay by our house and she passed away there so I don't remember too much about her. Okay. <coughs> what do you remember about your uh, your mom and your dad? Did they speak Oneida? Um, my mother did quite fluently and um, let's see, I don't think my father did. So did they ever talk about where they went to school or if they went to the boarding schools at all? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where my uh, father went, but uh, my mother went to um, a boarding school in uh, Wittenberg. Wittenberg? Yeah. They, um, it was one of those schools where they couldn't, uh, couldn't talk their native language. They had to talk English, otherwise they'd be punished, I guess, you know. You might have heard of that before, huh? <clears throat> so, that's what that was. Do you know how long she was there at all? Mm, no, I don't. I, okay. I couldn't say. All right. Um, she went to the boarding school. Do you know if your dad went to, uh, to school around the village at all? Hmm. I never really, um, I couldn't really say on that. Uh, my sister would probably know, but I, I don't know if they ever told me or not, you know. So. Did, um, did they work around the, the Green Bay area, or did he have a farm, or? No, he just, um, 
I guess my grandmother had a farm and he, he might have worked there, but he he was a mechanic in Green Bay for Broadway Automotive. That's where you got it from, huh? Mm-hmm, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Picked up on that. Okay. Now we're going to go to your sisters and brothers. And if you could start with the oldest and work your way down and tell us mm -hmm. what their names are. Mm -hmm. My oldest brother was uh, Vince Skenador. He passed away in, uh, let's see, I think it was 2000. Oh, wait, and then Bernice was the oldest, I'm sorry. She passed away in 2000, I forget the date. She got in an um, automobile accident up the road a ways here. And um, then there was uh, Marlene. She married to um, Myron uh, Skinner. Kept the same name. <laughs> and um, she lives in Green Bay now, that site. My three sisters. Right. And then um, Richard's the next one. No, I guess I'm the next one. <laughs> and then Richard. Richard was the youngest. Okay. So that's all. That's five of us. Okay. So. Is that a family of five then? Pardon? A family of five yes. children? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did they um, go to school around the area here with you, or they all pretty much grew up in this area, right? Um, Bernice and, um, and uh, Vince, Vincent, they went to um, West Beer High School, and the uh, rest of us attended um, local schools around the area here. Did you go to the mission school at all? Yes, I went there for a uh, couple of years. Then I was up the hill to Catholic school, High View school, Silvery Summit school, <laughs> a lot of schools. <laughs> so. What was it like growing up as a kid around the village when, when you were young? Well, it was kind of um, it was sort of hard. Uh, money wasn't um, easily available to their parents and stuff. You know, it was kind of hard not having a car sometimes. And, and um, I don't know, it was just... Do you have uh, electricity or running water? When you were growing up? Mm, let's see. Not most of the places. Most of the places we lived was uh, one room houses that we could, wherever we could find uh, a place to stay. We went there and rented from people who my mother got to know. They had no electricity, and they had to haul water. And, uh, there was no water there. Sometimes there was a spring-fed well. We'd had to haul water from there and stuff like that there. And, and then, um, like I say, it was kind of hard. Money wasn't too... But they did whatever they could mostly to keep us, you know. Did, um, did your mom do any kind of canning or... Um, yeah. Crafts and things. She used to can a little bit, quite a bit, whatever was available at the time. Then she, um, <clears throat> later on, she worked as a cleaning woman at different houses in Green Bay. And, you know. A lot of the ladies did at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where you live, but I know there was a well, like right on the end of Salt Pork Avenue, that a lot of people went to get water from. Mm -hmm. It's from around the area. Um, Later on, we lived after the, we moved out of all these other houses. We moved in there and firm, one of firm's houses. Mm -hmm. Remember when all them houses used to be down in the line there, about 10 houses. 
Along the creek? Yeah. A lot of people lived there with outhouses. And everybody got their water from that one well, like you said. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember some of the names that they had for the different areas? Like they had, I, I just mentioned Salt Pork Avenue. The oh. Different names. Uh, Goose uh, Town. Uh, yeah, Goose Town, that was up by, I don't know how that got a name. And um, like you say, Salt Pork Avenue. That one place there were firms they used to call it Stagger Lane. I don't know if that, yeah. <laughs> did you ever hear that? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And um, can't remember. No other ones. Kind of like nicknames, you mean? Yeah, the yeah. nicknames. They gave nicknames to everything, including the people. Yeah. Um, did your parents then, um, where did they shop? Or get their food from the local store, their De Pere, or? Um, I don't really know, but in the earlier days, but in um, the later days, they got them at Green Bay or else at um, food markets up the hill, you know. Schrader's. Morgan's, yeah. Morgan's. Most of the time, yeah. So. So what kind of games and um, social activities were were the kids doing at the time? Any kind of athletics or sports? Mm. Yeah, um, we used to play baseball whenever we could. Uh, play marbles and those tag games, I can't remember them. But play hide and seek <clears throat> and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> and. Um, Okay. Well, now, where did where did you go to school? Let's start with grade school. Grade school. Um, let's see. I started out at the mission. At the Oneida mission. Let's see. Went there a few years. Then um, <clears throat> I went to uh, that uh, Catholic school. Used to be on top of the hill. St. Joe's. Yeah. Went there for a few years. Then we moved, so we had to go to another school. It was High View School up there in Hobart. And then, um, then we went to uh, the Silvery Summit School. You, you know where that is, huh? That's up towards Freedom there. Right. Up there by... Uh, Fish Creek Road there. Right. Mm -hmm. And then high school? Yeah, I, I did one one year of high school. Yeah. I think the, my other brothers and sisters graduated, but I didn't. I I quit school at um, at um, first year. I didn't. Um, Were you working on cars by then? No, uh -huh. no, it um, wasn't too long after that then I started um, cleaning parts for my dad and I kind of got interested in cars and then, then after that I started uh, working for, for him, sort of like, but at the same time working for Coonan, you know, because Coonan owned that garage up there. <clears throat> And that's where I become, became a mechanic, you know, from him. You know. Yeah. Um, what was your first car like? Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was my pride. And, uh, <laughs> that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a 46 Chevy. It's a uh, uh, six-cylinder. I used to drive around, take it out on the road before I had driver's license and be scared going down the road. And my, you know, because you didn't have driver's license and it was a, was a clutch, clutch shifter. 
Mm -hmm. I'd be going down the road if I'd meet a policeman, my foot would start shaking like that. I could hardly hold up, <laughs> work the pedals. And, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I traded. Uh, I had a rifle, and I traded my brother-in-law for that car. Anyway, that's how I got the first one. Now, was your family Catholic, or did they belong to one of the other local churches? No, they was um, belonged to the Episcopal here. Episcopal. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Um, with the different uh, Christian holidays and Hoi An, did your family participated in those quite a bit? You mean like um, coming to church and that, or? Yeah. What was the like a usual Sunday or Christmas holiday? Yeah, I th think they used to come to church down here, and pretty much. How about Hoyan? Yeah. Us, you mean going out for treats and that, like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, us kids used to do that. Go up to an Ida, through, mostly to an Ida, and like you say, South Park Avenue, and get donuts. Yeah, that was. No, nowadays nobody does that. <laughs> you, you don't go Hoyani anymore? No. <laughs> uh, you'll have to come with us this year. Um, after you got into the car business, I know at some point you met um, Judy. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk a little bit about, about um, when you were married? and. In, the number of kids that you had? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we was um, <clears throat> married in August 3rd, 1963, and um, we lost our first child at about three months. Then we had um, eight other ones. That was um, Jared, Melanie, um, Clark, Clinton, Arthur, Matthew, Philip, Gordon Jr., and Daniel. And we lost um, Matthew about in 1999. He died at um, uh, 26 years old. From heart, I remember that heart problem. And Melanie's the only girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, she's. And um, <clears throat> yeah, we was married. Um, see, forty-three, forty-four, I believe, in next next August. Forty-four years. Um, all of the kids live on or around the reservation area? Mm-hmm. Except uh, Clark, he lives up in uh, Crandon. <clears throat> and all of the kids went to school around this area then? Mm-hmm. Yes. Most of them went to West Pier High School. Do you know if they ever talked about experiencing any type of um, discrimination? Mm, let me see. There might have been some, somewhat, you know, but not, not really a lot of it, you know. Mm -hmm. But there was some that the kids talked about. But uh, that's about it, though. Do you remember um, if your parents ever talked about the New York land claims or the 52 cent check? Mm. There was some talk about that, about, about how they would get that, those little checks there, you know, mm -hmm. and how that, where that came from, but that, that's about all they said about that, you know. Um, so. <clears throat> What 
What were the the summers like? I know you talked that they would talk about, or you talked about playing ball or sports. Did your family go up to the like the cherry orchard or um, apple picking or any of those types of? It seemed like a lot of families did those during the summer. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, they used to go up to. Uh, well, not my mother and dad, but. Uh, us kids would go up to a, a fish creek up there and pick cherries like for the summer. There was um, one place we used to go it was Uleman's Orchard. I don't know if, I don't think it's still there no more. You went there? Yeah. So did mm -hmm. I. <laughs> I think a lot of uh, people went there. There was, uh, his name was Eric and Paula. And then we used to go swimming in a lake up there and all. It was kind of a fun time. Yeah, it always seemed more like a vacation. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um. yeah we used to. Then when we weren't up there, so we sometimes as kids would go swimming in a duck creek. There, down below Suckers. <laughs> yeah. Lots of mm. it was, water wasn't clear, but you know, we used to go in there anyway, you know, swim. Um, do you remember when your family got a TV? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the first time we got one. Was um, I think it was around fifty-five, fifty-four, um, because uh, the neighbors, Benny and uh, Betty and Kenny Hill, they used to have a TV, and we asked to go down there and we'd sit down there and watch TV. They'd have to kick us out at night, you know, because we want to watch TV there. <laughs> that was the first time. But anyway, we finally got one and they finally got us a TV and we, so, oh, we'd sit there hours and hours. Yeah. That was the first entertainment, you know. That was big in those days. <laughs> Kind of cut down on the playing outside. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, they. <clears throat> did you go into the military at all? Yeah. Did you? What were you in? I was in the army for a couple of years, and I got out and and then I um let's see. That's when I started working for um. um my dad and Coonan up there then, and then I. Before that, I worked for um, um, local candy factories, you know, minimum wage was kind of cheap in those days. And um, we, uh, and I got into construction for a little while. And then, um, then I started working for the tribe and worked for them for 18 years until I retired in, in about, um, I think, 2001, somewhere in there. Do you remember how, uh, about when you went into the service and where you were stationed? Mm-hmm. Yes, I went in in um, April 1959, and I um, took basic down in... Um, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Then I went up to, uh, I did good on my um, um, test where they um, evaluate what you're, what you'll be doing after um, your basic. And I guess I did good on mechanics. So, so they sent me to a mechanic school in Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland. Then we graduated from there, then we went to, uh, we shipped to overseas in Korea. Stayed there about a year. Then I got out then. The 18 years that you worked for the tribe, was that in the mechanics department or where, yes. where did you work? Yes, that was for um, DPW up there, up on uh, Ranch Road there, they have that garage there. I started out in um, 
when the tribe had that um, little garage up there in Oneida. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that, but there was a little little hoist in the back where they changed tires and changed oil. And I started out there. Then I got um, called to the big garage up there. Then I stayed there working on cars and trucks and what, whatever was to be fixed, you know. <clears throat> so that's still. Some of them same guys are still working up there yet that I worked with. When did you retire? Mm, about five years ago. I think it was in 2000 or 2001, one of those, one of those years there. So what have you been doing since you retired? Play a lot of golf? Yeah, I play lots of golf and I still um, work on cars yet, you know. Just for the fun of it, huh? Yeah, just for helping people out and that. And I do other, try to do other things around the house, you know, keep up the house, the grass, and always mending something or fixing around the house or something. Try to keep busy. Um, do you participate in any of the, the governmental things like, oh, tribal elections or general tribal council meetings? Hmm. No, I don't go to too many meetings. I should, I should start going to them and see what's, to keep what's going on, you know. But I do I'll go vote, though, you know. What's your feeling about the New York land claims? Think it'll ever happen? Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's been going on so long. You mean far as getting a settlement or money or something like that? Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard to say, but I don't... It don't seem like they're getting, coming to a settlement. I don't know, you know, so... What does the, the word sovereignty mean to you? Sovereignty. <clears throat> I think um, it means sort of like a government by itself or something like that. I'm not, not sure. No, it seems like it means something like that. I don't know if that's right or not. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a government within a government, kind of. Mm -hmm. What What's your... Um, what is your feeling or terminology for an elder, or for being an elder? Um, you mean how do I feel about them? Or? Yeah, what does it mean to you to be an elder? Oh, um, I don't know. It seems like it's... All of a sudden, it seemed like it come up on you kind of quick, like, you know, it seemed like yeah. <laughs> after you was 40, 45, seemed like the years kind of went by kind of fast, like, like like nowadays, the time seems to be going faster. Whereas when I was, when you were younger, the time would seem like it went so slow, like, you know. So, I don't know, it just seems like, uh, like you're, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah. It does do that. What about the, um, you've seen a lot of growth in the community having grown up here. What are some of those things that you look at and if you're going to brag to somebody about things that have happened, what would you tell them? <clears throat> well, I'd just probably tell them how, how they come so far with the with the um, improvement of the community and buildings <clears throat> and how they manage the money from the casinos and built this new school and did 
not improvements in the community, bought several land, land acquisitions and uh, it's just, just tell them that they come a long way since back in the days of the 40s when we was growing up in the 50s. Come from uh, being poor to into the, you might say, the better better economic conditions, you know, nowadays. So. <clears throat> How do you feel about being Oneida? Mm, good. Uh, I don't know what what you can say about that either. I just <laughs> well, lots to be proud of. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Proud of the name and uh, Yes. One of the things we were um, asking, trying to get a picture of some of the stories that are handed down around the, the different people in the community, and we found that there are certain stories that apply to a lot of people. They all know the same story. But um, it, it deals with like ghost stories or witch stories, however you want to call them. And, um, like to ask you if your family has any stories that they pass on about things that might be considered strange or ghost stories? Hmm. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of um, different things, but I can't... Uh, can't quite remember them now. Um, yeah, because hmm. yeah, I can't remember none. Can't now, remember right now. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> your children, your grandchildren will look at your video someday, and what would you like to say to them? Any kind of advice that you would like to give to them? Well, I would <clears throat> probably just say. Um, keep attending school. Listen to your, listen to your parents, and and try to be a good person. That's what I'd say. Okay, Gordon. Uh, I think I've asked all the questions, but I'm going to ask these gentlemen back here if I missed something. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. You covered most of all of it. I appreciate your interview. Okay.